And Jim, I didn't understand that craft beer uh, would be hit so hard by this. You guys own a bunch of these brands. It's the loss of restaurant sales? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Because basically, the bar and restaurant part of our business has collapsed. Uh, you know, it pretty much went to zero. Um, we've been very fortunate at Sam Adams and Boston Beer Company because we've diversified um, with innovative beverages in addition to Sam Adams. So things like Truly Hard Seltzer. Hmm. And uh, we just, you know, reported our first quarter. Uh, our sales were up over 30% uh, in the first three months of the year based on our ability to innovate and, and drive growth that way. Now, right. the profits were off because uh, of the safety measures that we put in in our brewery to make sure you know we could keep running the brewery safely. And then we took back about $6 million uh, of that uh, stale beer that you talked about hmm. that it was left in the bars. And you know we don't want bars to open and be giving people stale Sam Adams. So we took it all back. Uh, we will end up uh, doing what we've been doing for 10 years, which is distilling it into ethanol, and that gets blended into gasoline. So uh, you might have been driving around with a little bit of Sam Adams in your tank, <laughs> Kelly. I'm learning a lot from this discussion already. Uh, Sam, let me bring you in, because while Jim was able to lean on sales of uh, you know, drinks like Truly, it must be harder for you guys with no offset. And by the way, how did we end up letting all this beer go bad? I'm sure people could have said, yeah, we'll open the restaurants, come in and, you know, bring some home with for you or something. We've been looking well, for know, a needy fraternity. Thankfully, yeah, go ahead. Sam. <laughs> I was just going to say, you know, thankfully, as Dogfish and Boston Beer merge, we have a very complimentary portfolio. You know, Jim mentioned uh, truly our Sam Adams brand, our T brand, Twisted, and with Dogfish Head's portfolio leaning into IPAs, uh, we're the number one sour producing beer uh, brand in America and distilled spirits as well. But also to comment on, on the earlier uh, idea that, you know, these our breweries, craft breweries, will people continue to trade up in a, in a challenging economy? And if we just look as recently as the last recession, 08, Craft beer weathered that storm strongly because I think we are truly an affordable luxury. And as the uh, economy gets tighter, folks might not be able to go for a, 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 a great luxurious vacation or, or buy a new SUV. But trading up 2 or $3 to a, a super premium true indie craft yeah. six-pack is an affordable luxury. And that's a, a beautiful thing. Yeah, a lot of times it just tastes better. Uh, you know, so Jim mentioned that, uh, distilling some of the, the uh, expired beer into ethanol. And I know for Dogfish Head, you guys are producing hand sanitizer. Is that right? I mean, a lot of these uh, spirits companies are doing so. Yeah, none of us thought we would, right? I think it was Mike Tyson who said everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the nose. And we got punched in the nose here, but we didn't, you know, turn around and leave the ring. You know, I'm really proud of the way our company not just reacted, but engaged in this moment, whether it's the Restaurant Strong program that Jim can talk about, or as you mentioned with Dogfish Head, we used our strength as a distillery since uh, high proof ethanol is the central ingredient in the World Health Organization's defined recipe for hand sanitizer. So we quickly pivoted, started making sanitizer. Today we're making enough sanitizer per week in our facility to clean over half a million hands. Our number one customer is the state of Delaware, keeping the police departments, the fire departments, the hospitals uh, in hand sanitizer is critical. And we're taking all the profits from the sales to the sale to the state and using those profits in a fund that we started with a Delaware restaurant organization yeah. to provide financial relief for families that work in the hospitality industry that have been put out of work by COVID. No, it's a great gear shift. Uh, Jim, I'm just thinking you're, there might be other people drinking during these interviews, but you're the only one we get to kind of watch that happening. And, <laughs> and we... oh, I thought I was off camera and sneaking a beer. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of product placement there, uh, I see. You know, I wanted to ask you about the, the relief program, the PPP. Is that something you guys would have qualified for? Did you ever think about applying for it or some of your subsidiaries, anything like that? Um, as you said, your sales are up, but profits down. What options do you have to weather this crisis if you end up needing capital? Um, well, I think, you know, we're pretty well capitalized. We've, uh, we've never really borrowed money. At the beginning of this, we drew our credit line down, but, uh, you know, the the best way to weather it is to actually, you know, grow and remain profitable. And we've been able to do that. And that's enabled us to do stuff 
like our Restaurant Strong program, um, we've contributed over $2 million to a program to uh, uh, disperse money to help uh, to bar and restaurant workers who've been laid off in this. So we've been able to, you know, help out others, which is really very characteristic of what craft brewers do. We're all very mindful of our connections to the communities that yeah. we serve. I know the communities rely a lot on them. I think about, you know, my hometown, Virginia, it was a it's been a huge part of their growth lately. We'll leave it there for now, gentlemen, but thanks again for describing uh, what's happening with business and the efforts you're making to help with COVID. Cheers. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs>